Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. Today we are going to discuss about composition and functions of blood. Okay, this is a very basic topic in the chapter blood. So uh, after this we will be uploading the series of lectures on this chapter blood okay we will be discussing about the plasma proteins uh, various cells of the blood and also the immunity okay today is just a short video of the introduction of the blood where we will discuss specifically on the composition and functions of the blood okay so first we will discuss about the physical characteristics of the blood okay so what are the physical characteristics of the blood first color of the blood okay so in our body so there is a very important it's a blood is a connective tissue okay so what is the color of the blood so everyone knows that it's uh, red so we'll write it as as a opaque red so it is opaque red in color so uh, it is due to the presence of one very important pigment which is present in the red blood cell that is known as hemoglobin okay because of the presence of this hemoglobin the blood is red in color or opaque red in color again we have two types of the blood vessels that is arterial and the venous blood vessels so the arteries and the veins so arteries are generally have the bright red in color whereas the veins which carry the deoxygenated blood they are are having the dark red in color okay so this is about the color of the blood then comes to the volume of the blood so in a normal person in a normal adult the it is on an average around 5 to 6 liters okay so in total volume of the blood in our in normal adult it will be around 5 to 6 liters okay so if we consider this as a percentage of the body weight it is roughly around 8 percentage of the body weight okay it is roughly around 8 percentage of the body weight or you can also tell it as 80 ml per kg body weight okay so if there is a person of 100 kg weight okay just for hypothetically assume there is a person of 100 kg weight so uh, it is uh, the blood will weigh around 8 kg that is if a person is weighing around 50 kg then it will, the per, it, it will be around 4 kg that is the uh, total weight of the blood okay or the sorry volumes okay 8 percent of this one that is around uh, uh, of the total body weight then third one is viscosity viscosity so generally we consider this viscosity viscosity uh, is like generally the thickness with respect to water so it is four to five times thicker than the water so generally the viscosity of the blood okay so it is more thicker than the water then specific gravity so blood has a specific gravity of 1.050 to 1.060 okay uh, on an average and blood has two important component plasma and cells and majority of the cells is rbc so if we consider the specific gravity of the plasma alone so it will be around 1.030 whereas if we consider the specific gravity of the rbc's alone then it will be around 1.090 on an average combined together whole blood specific gravity is 1.050 to 1. Uh, 060 okay so this is all about the physical characteristics of the blood and lastly about the ph ph hydrogen ion concentration as you know uh, ph of the blood will be around 7.4 okay slightly alkaline in nature plus or minus 0.5 so these are the physical characteristics of the blood okay so after knowing this basics about the blood let come comes to the let let's come to the our topic composition and functions of the blood so what exactly the blood consists of okay this 5 to 6 liter of the blood which is circulating in the blood vessels of our body what exactly uh, inside this blood that is the composition or the constituents of the blood so consider if we take a blood in a test tube more specifically anticoagulated blood okay because if we keep the blood outside if we collect the blood and keep it in a test tube then generally what happens is it gets coagulated it has a tendency to blood 
uh, has a tendency to clot okay we'll discuss about that clotting how exactly this clotting mechanism takes place to prevent this we put one chemical that is known as anticoagulant again we'll discuss about the various forms of the anticoagulant right now just consider an anticoagulant blood is collected in a test tube okay and it is centrifuged in a machine then uh, what happens is or or just it is made to stand on a St uh, it uh, on a stand for um, one hour or two hours then finally what will happen is so this uh, blood will the cellular component which is thicker portion okay cellular component which is thicker portion will get settled at the lower part okay and the fluid portion fluid portion will be above them okay so this fluid portion will constitute totally around roughly 55 percent of the total blood collected that is 55 percent is the liquid or the fluid portion and this liquid or the fluid portion it is known as plasma okay it is known as plasma then we have 45 percent of this cellular components okay 45 percent of these cellular components basically consist of rbc's wbc's and platelets which we are going to discuss now so this 45 percent of the cellular components are known as this is termed as pack cell volume or also known as hematocrit okay hematocrit so what is the composition of the blood coming to this first topic so blood mainly consists of the plasma and cellular component so plasma consists of 55 percent of the total blood and cells component uh, consist of the 45 percent okay now this is the solid part and this is mainly the fluid part or the liquid part so in between this in between this uh, there is a small coat okay small layer which constitute about less than one percent less than one percent and this coat it is known as buffy coat so this buffy coat is uh, basically it consists of uh, wbc's and platelets okay and this one generally 43 to 47 percent this will be the rbc's okay so again we'll discuss in detail about this composition that is the plasma so this plasma plasma is basically a fluid portion so 91 percent of the plasma is made up of water it is the liquid part okay then nine percent of this plasma is made up of solids okay so out of the hundred percent of the plasma 91 percent is fluid that is water and nine percent is solid and out of this nine percent solid one percent consists of the inorganic substances okay inorganic substances and whereas eight percent constitutes the organic substances okay out of this nine percent solids out of that eight percent organic substances seven percent consist of very important organic substance they are known as plasma proteins okay very important terminologies please remember this we are going to discuss about this thing in detail in the next class about the plasma protein and rest one percent of the organic substances in the blood consist of the sugars fats npu that is the non-protein nitrogenous substances sorry okay and, and uh, sugars fats hormones and enzymes whereas this one percent of the inorganic substances consist of the uh, basically ions like sodium calcium magnesium okay chloride bicarbonate phosphate so and so okay so this is the composition of the plasma so let me revise you what does plasma consist of 91 percent water and nine percent solids this solids consist of one percent inorganic eight percent organic organic substances consist of majority seven percent is the plasma protein that is out of the hundred percent of the plasma seven percent is mainly plasma proteins okay we'll discuss in detail about it in the next video then one percent is the non-protein nitrogenous substances sugar and fat then organic inorganic substances are the ions then come to the cellular part okay cellular part that is the cells okay basically composition consists of the plasma and cellular part so basically three important blood cells are there so the first one is rbc's are also known as red blood corpuscles or red blood cells or simply erythrocytes okay Erythro 
रो साइट्स ओके सो आरबीसी सो मेजोरिटी ऑफ दिस सेल्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूट बाई दरबीसी ऑन एन एवरेज इट इज अराउंड फाइव मिलियन सेल्स पर माइक्रो लीटर ऑफ द ब्लड माइक्रो लीटर टेन रेस टू माइनस सिक्स ओके सो वन माइक्रो लीटर ऑफ द ब्लड विल रफली कंसिस्ट ऑफ द फाइव मिलियन आर बी सीज हाव एवर इन मेल्स इट इज मोर फीमेल्स इट इज बीट लेस विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल लेटर बट ऑन एन एवरेज इट इज अराउंड फाइव मिलियन देन वाइट ब्लड सेल्स ऑफ द डब्ल्यू बी सीज इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ल्यूकोसाइट्स सो ल्यूकोसाइट्स जनरली इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ अराउंड फोर थाउजेंड टू लेवन थाउजेंड सेल्स पर माइक्रोलीटर इज वन माइक्रोलीटर ऑफ द ब्लड इज कंसिस्ट अराउंड फोर थाउजेंड टू लेवन थाउजेंड ल्यूकोसाइट्स देन फाइनली प्लेटलेट्स we are going to discuss in detail about this cells also in the upcoming uh, videos okay so platelets around 1.5 lakhs to 4 lakh cells okay you should remember the normal value is very important 4 lakh cells per microliter of the blood it is 1 microliter of the blood consists of the uh, 1.5 to 4 lakh cells so to just to revise these three important cells remember rbcs are in millions platelets are in lakhs and wbcs are in thousands okay so rbcs are the most numerous cells in the blood so this is about the composition of the blood then coming to the second part of the today's lecture that is the functions of the blood okay there are numerous functions of the blood i will just enumerate briefly some important functions of the blood okay i will just enumerate the uh, briefly about the important functions of the blood so blood has the nutritive function nutritive function means whenever we eat something the nutritive substances are ultimately digested in our gastrointestinal system and from that the nutrients like glucose amino acids and fats are transported to different parts of our body okay and this transportation is with the help of the blood so it helps in the nutrition of our body if the blood is not supplying to a particular tissue or organ then that particular tissue or organ is deprived of the basic nutrition so it acts as a nutritive medium then blood has the respiratory function too so as you know our lungs take oxygen inside and exhale the carbon dioxide outside right so this oxygen from the lungs are transported to the various cells and tissues with the help of the blood and carbon dioxide is transported from the cells to the our various uh, uh, back to the lungs that is with the, that's why the blood helps in the respiratory function that blood helps in the ex has a excretory function too so the waste products like uh, urea and all that is excreted by the ex from the cells to the excretory are uh, transported to the excretory organs like the kidney and the skin uh, through the blood so it acts as an excretory organ too then it helps in the transport of various substances so blood helps in the transportation of the various uh, chemical substances like drugs okay it is transported to the different tissues and uh, organs of our body or certain chemicals or hormones are transported to their target uh, tissues or, or cells okay so blood acts as a transport medium for the various nutritive and other chemicals then blood helps in maintaining the homeostasis okay homeostasis or so homeostasis means maintenance of the internal environment of our body like maintenance of the water balance maintenance of the body temperature maintenance of the acid base balance and all so blood acts our helps in the homeostasis we'll discuss about this very important topic homeostasis okay homeostasis in the next uh, or some other videos then blood helps in maintaining the body temperature too so as the blood has the high specific uh, heat 
okay it has it helps in conduction of the heat okay so and helps in evaporation of the heat so it is helpful in the maintaining of the body temperature of our body then blood helps in the defense mechanism of our body that is it helps in maintenance of the immunity both cellular and uh, humoral immunity cellular by the various cells of the blood cells of that is wbc's and uh, humoral immunity with the help of the antibodies and finally blood helps as a storage tissue that is various chemicals hormones and enzymes are stored in the blood okay so that's all about this today's lecture thank you